I work at a personal branding agency and I'm also a full-time college student, but I feel like I'm not doing enough to be successful. Mm. Yeah, you sound so lazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't even know what to tell her right now because I was like drinking 40s at that age. <laughs> We had very different upbringings. We were accountable to not having a plan. Like the plan was to not have a plan and let that be okay. Does that make sense? But the non-plan was a plan. You know what my favorite part is? You were all following. You're like, got it. Got you. Yes, totally honey. get you. I left a high paying career to start a business and it's been a long journey that's not as profitable as I thought. Mm. How long have you had this particular business? Two months. Okay. Okay. We should have started there. All right, we ready for some Q&A? Okay, we'll give you a little context for how we, we have found that this flows the best and so we can get to as many questions as possible. So where is our, are you gonna be the mic runner? The beautiful Brianne. Can we give her a round of applause? Just such a beautiful lady. Are you leave it clipped on or no? I know. <laughs> I'm here for it. I had, I had, at the break, Risa was at Sorry. the break. Risa was cleaning a lipstick smudge off my cheek, and I think it was from when you said hi. So yeah, we're just getting oh, all okay. close and comfy all right. today. It's all good. It's fine. So um, what we're gonna do is, if you have a question, we're gonna go through as many as we can. We're gonna have you stand up, yes, in front of a room of people. You're gonna say <laughs> your name, and if you want to give like the five second shout out of your business, you are gonna be, you know a guest on the Earn Your Happy and Powerhouse Women podcast. And then the next words out of your mouth are, my question is, and we're gonna ask you, we're gonna challenge you with so much love to, to give us your question in the most concise state, because if we need any background information or if we need clarifying information, we will we'll ask you for it. But that way we can get through as many questions as we possibly can. And it's just easier also for the listening audience to just get, to hear the most concise version version of the question, and then we'll give you our best And the best podcast answers. listeners won't fast forward you. They won't. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever listened to a podcast where you're like, lady, <laughs> <laughs> get to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, amazing. So who wants to ask the first question? Okay, in the back, and then we've got two up here. We'll come to you next. Thank you so much. I adore both of you. Yeah. I don't need to hold it. Um, <laughs> you can't. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I've been listening to Lori's podcast today because you sent out the prompt this morning about creating content pillars. Mm. And, and I finally, I've been matchmaking for 30 years and hunting for women at events. I'm Roseanne Higgins, by the way. And <laughs> I am finally identifying my superpower is going up to a stranger. Mm. And I had pre Williams agree to be the first person I did this to where I go up to him with my phone. And I say, hey, would you film me meeting you? And, and I need people to see I do this every single day. Yeah. How do I convert that into the right content, name it the right series, get the mm. right hashtag and convert it into why? Uh, how does it demonstrate what I do for a living? You know, mm. how would you think You're trying about to this? show what you do for a living? Yes. Which okay, is approaching cool. people that might fall in love with the most eligible men on earth. OK, I, I, you're going to have to try a bunch of stuff. So you're going to have to do what you did today multiple times a week. Um, like you're going to have to have one of those actions that you try and put out. Like, I think in the beginning, if I told you once a day, that might feel overwhelming. So maybe three times a week you try, like try this first. So let's try like showing how you're either meeting people or connecting with people. It sounds like, and just start putting that out, but don't just put it out and go, nobody liked it. Cause no one's going to like anything you do the first time. Do you know what I mean? So you have to keep putting it out and saying, do I like this? Like, would I, mm, that's good. as a true, I, I will go through my content and go, if I did not know me, if I was a total stranger, would I be like, this was a waste of my time or did it add value to me? Can you really be neutral on your own material? Yes. And see it? You can over time. So if you were, if you put yourself in the shoes of your tar target demographic, would it actually add value? And do you hook it fast enough to be like, mm -hmm. this woman could help me? Tell me about hooking it fast enough. Really getting into the mind of that target demo in her fears. Like, are you afraid of being single for the rest of your life? <laughs> Dying alone. <laughs> yeah. are, you, are you afraid of a 
cat eating your face? Like something like that. No, or it could be something like, you know, you could speak into the fears of when I think about my single girlfriends and the things that they say about mm -hmm. what it's like to be in the dating world, because you're really trying to help people see another option for themselves in terms of meeting their match. The invisible man that I'm not packing in behind me. Oh, right. right. <laughs> so so it could be like it could be something like, do you do you think there are no eligible mm. men in Phoenix? That's good. I'm going to prove you to you that you're you're wrong right or something like that mm -hmm. so it's speaking right to something that oh, i was just saying that to my girlfriend right and the woman's seeing it and she's feeling like you have been mm -hmm. oh, eavesdropping on her conversations right so something I like that, that is what is what is the most attention grabbing and i think on social media this is kind of just for everybody pay attention to what's happening on social media right now the ways that people are creating content i love that style of content for you because you are very you're very personable. You have this, this background of, of years and years and decades of helping people meet their match. So we want to see you more and see you in your element. So I love that. And then I, it would be something like, I'm Roseanne Higgins. I've been a matchmaker for how many years? 30. For 30 oh, years. Nice. So it's now it's establishing authority. So it's the hook, establish authority. And then it's, you know, whatever you want that piece of content to be after that. And how do I make myself accountable? Like you mm. have the 30 day surprise yourself challenge. That would be a good way to do it. Yes. Yes. So it's, it, I mean, it really is it, holding yourself accountable. I think number one, it's knowing how you're motivated and knowing what, what's going to hold you accountable. So, you know, whether it's finding an, ac an accountability buddy, we did that. We did like a 30 day posting challenge mm -hmm. where we committed to each other. We were going to post every day for 30 days and we would tag each other and, it would be 11 p.m. and I'd be in bed scrolling on my phone like an, everybody does. Everybody does that, right? And then I would see that she just posted realizing I didn't post and I thought I was off the hook, but then she would tag me in hers and I would be mad for 30 seconds, but then I would be so grateful for the accountability. And then you'd go make a post? And then I would make a, I would find something in my camera roll and add some value. And a lot of times those ended up being the posts that performed the best because I didn't overthink them. And you didn't care that it was 11 o'clock at night when you posted and no. it wasn't the most popular Exactly. Time of day. I, I didn't get in my mind saying, this isn't a good time to post. I mm -hmm. should wait till exactly 9.01 a.m. That's what it's about. Is mm -hmm. So the, and I shared on the podcast that you had listened to the 30 day, cons I was talking about the 30 day consistency challenge. Mm -hmm. So I had started with that saying the 30 day consistency challenge was just about letting go of caring what that was about. Like just getting in the cycle of, of like posting. Mm -hmm. I think for like the next version of that is if you want to start making those content pillars, which I just put this podcast out if you want to listen to it. But for you, in order to stick to it, you said, how can I be accountable? It's really tough, you guys, to be accountable without a plan. We were accountable to not having a plan. Like the plan was to not have a plan and let that be okay. So there was actually a plan. Does that make sense? Yeah. But yeah. the non plan is a plan. Yeah, just, you, you know what my favorite part is? You were all following. You're like, yeah, got yeah. it. Got you. Yes, totally honey. get you. But you must have a plan for this next version. So maybe it's three times a week, you're going to do the thing that we just talked about. And so the way that you hold yourself accountable to that is in a Google Doc, writing the three questions that you want to hit on that week that you want to make a video on. And you map that out for the whole month. So you have your 12 for the month. And then when you wake up that day, or maybe you batch that week, you do your three that week on Monday. Now you have a plan. So now you're accountable. Now you're not going to not post because you have them done. You're suggesting almost a woman on the street kind of um, motif. Yeah. And this also popped into my mind. You're standing right next to Stephanie, who's a brilliant content creator and her whole business is we built around met. helping. I so saw the wedding ring. as far as accountability, <laughs> she's like, damn, she may not be a potential client. However, but but that also in areas that I really in areas that I struggle to stay consistent, investing in it. Yeah, I think is is another great way yeah, to for hold sure. yourself accountable. Bless you, ladies. Thank you great so much. Great questions. So I think we all feel that way. So thank you so much. Okay, we'll come up here. I saw Sierra <laughs> and, and Mercedes. We can go in whatever order we want to go here. Hello, I'm Sierra Shuey. I'm the host of the Uploading Podcast. I'm an environmental scientist and I help moms create low-tox homes without feeling overwhelmed. My question is: in moments that feel really painful, 
how have you differentiated between it being a point to push through or a point where you're supposed to redirect? So I think that the the energy is actually the same because regardless, you're going to keep, you want to keep the forward momentum, even if it's not in the vein of the thing that you are going, that you are going into. And I just heard this wisdom this week or within the last week or two that made a lot of sense. And I, when I look back, this is probably, probably a version of what I ended up doing. And what he said, it was on this podcast. He said, give it a hundred percent, like give it your full 100%, that's actually the fastest way to get clarity about whether it's for you or not versus I think what I've done in the past, which is like, I want clarity and I'm kind of like giving it half energy because I'm like, well, I don't want to give it my full energy unless it's really my thing. So I actually think that momentum and action in the wrong direction, even if it's the wrong action, creates more momentum than if you sit in indecision too long. So I think it's having a clear vision of, you know, what do you really want? And and yes, reevaluate that on a periodic basis. Maybe it's once a quarter, once a year. Like, what are my goals? Is this still getting, is this still a project or a business venture that's getting me closer to that? And if not, then it's like as fast as you can wrap something up. If it is a no, I think that also creates momentum. It's like that in between kind of wishy-washy energy that I realize I, I would get really stuck in and I lose a lot of energy. So I don't know if that like completely relates to yes. the question behind yeah, your question, no, absolutely. but I thought that was really brilliant in terms of how to speed up the process in those moments where you're, you have a big decision to make. Mm-hmm. I love that. I want to um, add another layer because it's so layered that yeah. decision making is so unique because you have to make bad decisions to make good ones and it never ends like you never actually learn how to precisely make a good decision i mean honestly in major indecision right now of like do we have children or not like i'm just at that point in my life where certain things have not worked do i do this or not and so mm-hmm. every day is a massive question mark And still, I'm not even like remotely clear, but the thing that has given me peace, even around this process, instead of being like, clock's ticking, I gotta make this decision. Like I'm I'm doing the thing in my head where I'm Mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna be 67 when they graduate or whatever, like (laughs) whatever we do. And like kind of real numbers, everyone. Um, (laughs) So, or maybe they'll never graduate like me. Oh no. (laughs) There we go. We just cleared that one up. Who cares anyway? Um, But I heard someone say, if you're in indecision, you're never, ever going to know 100% what decision to make anyway, Mm -hmm. ever. So make a decision knowing that you have to make a decision and make like that's going to show you what the path is because a wrong decision shows you the right decision. So Mm -hmm. we get so caught up in, is this the wrong decision? Now, the only catch 22 with children is once you have them, you can't give them back. But so that's where I push back on that one. So we hear. So we hear. But that really, really helped me just being like, and also knowing that we are all the type of people in here. I truly, I feel okay saying this with everyone in here. We have the wherewithal and the understanding that we're going to make any decision the right decision for us. Meaning like we're going to we're going to turn that into a lesson or a story or something that's going to be for us. And that brings me a lot of peace with decisions because I don't believe I don't believe any decision is a bad decision. Like look back on any decision that you thought was bad. It probably brought you something eventually really great, even if that was more of a backbone or skill set or more of Mm -hmm. like you don't you know, even worst case scenario, which, you know, some people don't like going here, but I think it's important to go here, like losing someone you love more than anything. And once that's like the worst Mm -hmm. fear for a lot of people, but once it happens, you got through it Mm -hmm. somehow and made their life meaningful. And so you can even look at something as painful as that and go, well, I made some meaning out of it, or I'm going to make my life mean something because of it. And so I think that helps me with making decisions is like, everything is going to Every, I'll make everything work. Hopefully that helped at all. My name is Riley Richardson. I work at a personal branding agency and I'm also a full-time college student, but I feel like I'm not doing enough to be successful. Mm. Yeah, you sound so lazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I like, and also same, same. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, we all feel that way. I don't even know what to tell her right now because I, I was like drinking 40s at that age. <laughs> <laughs> In the back of a mini 
minivan. So great. It, oh, not my minivan. We had, we had very different upbringings. No, we'll, we'll, we'll give you something on there. Um, do you have what, anything did for you have first? A, did you want to ask a question? Oh, on, my on question the, is just how can I feel like confident and like that I'm doing mm, enough to be successful in the future? Yeah. First of all, I love I love your drive. Yeah. Like I feel I feel like I I see that in you. Yes. And what I want to do is validate that it's real. And you'll get to God. I sound like such an old lady now. I'm like you'll get to my age. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll you know you'll realize that it's every every season of life just has so much to teach us. And I you think can sit if you want. I we really talk wish. for a long time. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your legs might get tired. <laughs> And I think it's it's just like this is the season to lean into everything that interests you. Mm. Like what I wish I would have given myself more permission to do is to lean into all the things I was possibly interested in. You know, make all of the mistakes. This really is such a beautiful season to try a lot of different mm -hmm. things, especially if you are someone who has a high drive. But don't get attached to the outcome. Because if, if I was 20 year old, 20 something Lindsay, I was building my carpet empire. So if I had gotten too fixated on I'm going to, you know, work up the corporate ladder or, you know, really what that was is I loved being in sales. I loved being in control of my own income. And I saw this path to, you know, make the money I wanted to make. But it wasn't that wasn't the only way to do it. And I couldn't see that view from that season of my life. So doing exactly what you're doing, putting yourself in mm -hmm. rooms like this, I never would have been in a room like this as you know as college Lindsay and to ask even a know, question I like, didn't even never. know that places yeah. like this existed mm -hmm. so it's hard to hear this when you're in it and you're having that feeling like am I doing enough but you really I'm just going to be your Kris Jenner right now you're doing amazing sweetie <laughs> you're doing amazing I mean but really yeah, yeah but just stay curious that's the biggest mm -hmm. thing I love that yeah mm -hmm. I mean, I was just going to say like literally like same because do you feel, do you feel like you found the thing that you want to do yet? I have no idea. <laughs> Great. Good. Then that is so perfect. Yeah. Because are you just comparing yourself to people that are, who, wait, tell me, who are you comparing yourself to? Is there someone who like a, a job or a career? My amazing or... boss. <laughs> okay. No, um, I think just a lot of people my age, like yeah. you see on social media, are like buying million dollar houses and like just always doing who are these people <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think I think first of all it's just the realization you know this version of this for us was like when we first got into entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurship yes I'm like is that a word that's the word um when we first got into that what happens is that you think you're seeing certain things and actually not a lot of people are have the success that you think that they have mm -hmm. so I think a lot of that is going on uh, like a lot because people learned really quickly on social if they can create that illusion it attracts people and it can attract them to give them money and it can attract them for all of these different things so I think the first part was realizing that that so much of that now that I'm older and have gotten to like actually learn about people's businesses and how they mm -hmm. work they might have, um, and I'll just use for example, like they might have had a million dollar launch, but they paid nine hundred thousand dollars in ads to get to make a hundred thousand. So I was beating myself up on mm -hmm. a three hundred thousand dollar launch because I was comparing myself to the million dollar person because I, they didn't never shared the back end, or they never shared that maybe that wasn't really their house, or maybe they got a great leasing price. Like there's a lot of things like mm -hmm. that going on. Truly. Um, you can literally rent houses like that by the hour just to do photo shoots in them. Yeah. Not saying that your friends are. No. But you can. And then those one-offs who have that life, like, that's great if you want to strive for that. But also, I think being, like, so young and wanting all of the things right now, which is totally normal, obviously, it's like, where does it go from there? It's like allowing yourself to sit and enjoy, like, what comes slowly that if I could go back to myself when I was younger, I would tell myself to enjoy myself because I spent 12 years hustling so hard and getting accolade after accolade to never enjoy it, to wake up like 37 years old and realize that I had spent my whole life never feeling like I had enough, even though I had everything. And it was the saddest, saddest thing. And so if you can enjoy like, my God, you're super gorgeous and you like sound like you have a great job and you have friends and like I know that that's not the answer but keep moving forward but also like just enjoy where you're at 
because there are these levels that when you hit them, like allow them to feel good and realize that they're milestones, like you're hitting a milestone right now, even being in this room, like allow yourself to really appreciate and enjoy those milestones and do something to celebrate them. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you're Love welcome. that question. Hi, I'm Mercedes Collins, and I do high-performance neurofeedback here in Arizona, so working with ambitious women to help them rewire their brains and fast-track nervous system regulation. So my question is, how do you, when it comes to having your support system when you very first started, feel like you're not doing it to prove yourself to somebody else? Because like for me, I left a high-paying career to start a business, and it's been a long journey that's not as profitable as I thought mm -hmm. it would in the mm -hmm. quick snap of an eye. So how do you keep yourself going and feel like you're doing it for you and not to prove and get back to the success you had? How long did it take you to get your initial success? I mean, I was 22, so maybe two years. But is years. that including like school and all of the things that yeah. you studied and learned? No. So we have to add that portion and realize there's mm -hmm. always... There's always like a studying portion and like a becoming portion. And mm. so in your business, there's, you know, people want to have success on year two when really you have to think about when people go to college to be a doctor, <laughs> like in order to get that success and to learn, they go to school for four to six to eight to 10 to 12 to however many years to become what they are. And so in business, you really, truly need years to become the person that is the business person who can handle that, who understands it, who knows the inner working. So, you know, when our businesses don't go the way that we want, it's because we're just missing a lot of education and information and experience. And there's, there's no way to rush that. And so, because you didn't actually rush your first success, you probably really built yourself up in your education. And maybe you were, you know, had, I don't know what your history is, but maybe you had parents who even like instilled different things in you. So the timeline is never fast. Like things can look fast, but on the back end, if they really add up all the things that they had done in their life to get to that point, it probably wasn't fast at all. So mm -hmm. hang in there. And, it, you know, if someone else is successful in that, thing and you really believe that you could be it just means you're just missing you're just missing some information and experience so if you don't want to quit I wouldn't quit I'm not a quitter yeah right. <laughs> she's like no I'm good no nope. I'll risk it all it's fine but it does take way longer like everyone that we see um something really cool to do is like go back to your favorite like mentors and go back 10 years ago and just like google them for their first um <laughs> videos busy girl healthy life Go like Marie Forleo too. like go try to find some of her first videos. Um, go try to mm -hmm. like anyone's first anything. And you'll see that it was I mean, it's so bad. They're so bad. It's so good. <laughs> so but what we see is this. Oh, they're pros. I We only saw them in the last two years. Like a lot of this happening to a lot of people right now, like Cody Sanchez popping off in a year. Someone literally said to me. I just want to be like Cody Sanchez. All she like it was only a year and she mm. built this thing. I'm like. You are seeing like 20 years of information that now she just sat in front of a camera, but she's an expert. Mm -hmm. She is an expert in that information. Mm -hmm. So when she sits in front of that camera, she has been in rooms, on stages, in businesses. That's how in a year she can blow up. But we have we have to put that kind of time in to be an overnight success. Mm. Okay. No, that makes sense. And then I also sometimes wonder if it's like almost proving it to myself because I wasn't trying so hard mm. when I was younger because it was just fun for me. And now I'm like working really hard trying to get back to it, mm. but in a total different realm. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder if like mentally that plays a toll too. Mm. How long have you had this particular business? Two months. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. We should have started there. No, no, sir, no. This one, no, this particular one, yes. It's been about three, four months in, okay. yeah. And I was in my other career. It was new home sales. I was in it for six years. Oh, so okay. I just started young. So okay. I'm just like yeah. trying to get back to that, but in a different world. Yeah, yeah, totally. So this, I mean, you're young. This cycle will happen over and over. So if you can like know it's a, uh, you know, a good two to five year cycle and just enjoy being a beginner because that's where you become the you that I think you see in your head. Like mm -hmm. if you can enjoy being a beginner, that's where you'll just, you will find so much success. Yeah. 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 I love all the ambition. She's like, I this hate room. this. She literally is like rejecting this advice. She's like, uh-huh. No, no, I, no, I really am. Cause that's something that I truly think about is like trying to quickly prove myself and yeah. like to family. Like, no, I didn't make a like shitty decision for mm. the family. But that's, so they're not going to believe it until 
until you've proved you're like going to be over even proving them and all of a sudden they're going to start like bragging about you to their friends and you're like you even know what I do for a living yeah yeah it's like the this is so this is so important for everyone to hear and if you don't mind I I, I, like want to stay with you for a second with it so this is a really really important piece of your journey and of theirs because right now you're you're showing them that it's okay to not be an overnight success because right now they might have a story in their head like oh see she thought she was good at one thing and it doesn't transfer to another thing of course it doesn't you're learning the new thing like what does transfer is your absolute like grit What does transfer is your ability to be a beginner. What does transfer is your heart. What does transfer is that you love what you're doing and you're always going to follow your gut no matter what. And you're going to show them that. And so it's such an important lesson for them to go, oh, she was willing to fail. She was willing to like stay at it. She was willing to have that tenacity. Like that's what they need to see. And then for you, you need to not be an overnight success. That's probably the worst thing that could ever happen to you for your life. Does anybody in here had massive success kind of multiple times and then you realize you don't want that thing anymore, but the thing that you want to go into, you're terrible at. Mm-hmm. And so it, it it's a really, it's a tough cycle to beat because mm-hmm. you find yourself in a place where you're not doing the thing that you love because you're, you're bad at it in the beginning. And so you just think you're bad because you've had success. And I mean, I've, I've experienced this in when I transferred into the um, product company, it is such a different world. Really not a lot of my success or skill set is transferring much into this world. And it is so overwhelming. It is so frustrating. I have moments where I'm like, I feel like I look so stupid. Uh, people are like, oh my God, what did she get herself into? Like there is a lot of pressure there and there's a lot of a pressure that I'm p- applying to myself. But I know that this is my work to become the next level person that I want. And so you're just, you have to stick with it to learn those skill sets and also like to have this moment of not being successful yet in it or like as successful as you want. Makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Cause you're, and I'm, and I'm not blowing it off. I promise. No, no I, I was I, joking. I do, I do take it. I'm, to heart. I'm sarcastic. I'm sorry. I do it as a joke. Um, but the other thing I just want to say is you guys like these moments. So for you, you're working with women who feel the same way. So you have to be in it. So mm-hmm. if there's a disconnect with you in a future client, it's like, you're going to be delivered all the things that you need to be able to teach later. Cause if you want to be really good at what you do, you need to reprogram yourself right now to let it be okay. That success can take time in like a really masterful thing that you want to get it into. I loved your question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, over here, Tirza. Do you want to squeeze anything? Nope. Just your butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Tirza Hova. <laughs> I'm squeezing my butt cheeks right now. <laughs> See, I mean, it looks great. Looks great. It looks great. <laughs> uh, I did squats today, so I feel like good. So. No, um, I'm Tirza Hova. I'm the owner of Milk by Mom. We are a breast milk freeze drying service. Mm-hmm. So cool. Um, it's a really innovative industry. There's really only four of us in the country doing it. And I'm really passionate about building community. And this is something that you both have d- excelled. And one of the things that I really want to do is start to build our referral program, our affiliate program, mm. but make it unique and special. And I know you talk about this on your podcast and you're trying to do that with Glossy, but I'm really interested in just any sort of nuggets that you've come across along the way in terms of how I can do this in a unique way to really foster the community at first. Because I don't want it to seem like I'm just for profit. Become an affiliate. I'll give you, you know, a kickback. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really, really am passionate about building a community for women women for mothers Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can feel that Mm -hmm. you can feel the passion and I think it's it starts with that anytime you're cultivating community it really starts with just asking yourself the question what am I unifying people around like what Mm -hmm. is that mission that when I say like you know when you say when you deliver the message of what you do when you're speaking to your target audience that they just like connect like when you I could feel the moms in the room connect with you when you describe Mm -hmm. what you did so I think it's no like getting that and then realizing like well what is the affiliate program going to help them fulfill on so you know, are mm-hmm. you passionate about helping other women make money? Are they passionate? Are they going to connect more with the mission behind it? Are they going to share it for that reason? And, it, and maybe it's a little bit of both, but I think it's having the mission of what you're, you stand for as a brand. That's how you start to build community. You're declaring, here's what we stand for. And if you're a part of this community, if you're connected to this, this is, you ride with us on mm-hmm. these, these 
things that we really believe in. And then from there, it's what is going to really motivate people to want to bring others into that conversation. And, and I think if you build it around that, it's just there's nothing better than helping other women make money. And and you have to be OK being for profit mm -hmm. if you want them to be. Not that you're not, but just notice that like you have there's something there maybe in a fear that people might think that it's about you being for profit. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's OK. That's just that's where we find out what might be subconsciously in our way is it's like the thing we say when we, we, we don't even realize we say it, but ground yourself in why you are passionate about helping these women make money. The profit thing will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I need to hear that. <laughs> it's so true. I think that's so it's so important. Like this was a big thing. I think when you get started in network marketing and then started in business, we need women to let it be okay that you want to make a lot of money. Like, I think that's really important because I do believe when women make great money, like they, we do great things with it. Like all of you want to employ amazing people. All of you want to buy great clothes from female founders. Like truly, like we think about it. We, we put a lot of thought into it. So money in the hands of women, I think is freaking amazing. And I think it's really okay to even just exercising, allowing yourself say things that feel like that, like say it to other women. Like it's okay to want to make a lot of money, you know, um, with the affiliate thing, I've been diving in super deep because this is just where I'm at right now. So I've been talking to a lot of different people about what's working in affiliate programs. I just got a little bit of advice today, like doing the mass sweep for affiliates is great if that's what you want to do. But what we're finding from that is that it's, you know, people will post maybe one or two times or make one sale and they just don't do much after that. So what can end up happening is you've created a big program that takes a lot more time and energy to manage than you're getting anything out of. Because so many people now it's becoming such a normal thing to like just be able to go get an affiliate link. People don't realize it takes a lot of time and energy to manage an affiliate program. So the, the companies who are finding some success with affiliates, they're doing a few different things and they're like, they're more searching for an in-depth partner where they're actually kind of paying that person up front and, and putting out a plan of like, what could this partnership look like? So maybe for you, one or two moms, maybe just you start with one who's like a, maybe a well-known mom or something like that, who maybe doesn't even need your product, but would really speak to it. And you offer her like a contract or money to fulfill on certain things, but be like, we really want this to be something that can go deeper later. And here's how that could be structured later. Like maybe they get a percentage of sales later. That's going on a lot. So a really good affiliate would want like probably to get paid up front, but then potentially have a discussion of like a partnership on all of their posts or what they bring in. That's just one model. But if you're thinking of like really partnering, that's what I would look at for someone like you. Yeah, you're welcome. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. Chelsea? Hello, um, I'm Chelsea Hughesome. I own a construction company in Denver. I am an author, speaker, and starting my podcast soon. Here's my question. How I want like specific strategies from you too, if you have any, of how do you be a big dreamer and rein yourself in? And I'm going to give an example. So yes, I have my day job, the construction company. I'm, I have my podcast to-do list, my book to-do list. I'm writing two more books. I have my speaker to-do list. I have, I think a lot of us in this room are doing such a lazy lot people, of things. Yeah. Wow. Lazy, <laughs> lazy people. I think, you know, we're all doing things. So how I get overwhelmed, I look at the to-do list, like, Oh my God. And then I struggle to even what, how do you decide what to focus on in all the things you're doing? How do you rein yourself in? Is there anything that's worked for you? Or do you pick a day and focus on this? I would just mm -hmm. love any tips. Cause it's I a struggle. struggle with this. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we were I'm hoping you would be a bad person. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> we invited you all here to help us. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's taken me a while to figure out how my energy, my creative energy, and just my brain works best. And it's interesting because mm -hmm. it does ebb and flow. I think one of the gifts of this year with just a lot, a, a lot of pressure, right, coming in and just having to deal with a lot of acute things in my life. It's had me narrow my focus and I could physically only focus on what was right in front of me. 
And so what's interesting is I'm like, oh, this is this is what they say about focus. <laughs> wow, this is really powerful. And so where I'm adopting that and taking it back in now as I'm feeling ready to take more on again, I'm noticing that for me, what I'm trying on right now is that I actually am one of those people where I want to be able to pour all of my energy into one thing for like the full day or at least half the day. And that's tough because then I have to set myself up to be ahead on the things that other people need for me in order to do that. But I'm kind of playing around with my schedule, making sure I have certain days that are completely free because that even for my brain, not seeing a bunch of meetings. Yes, I still have the to do list, the one, the handwritten one and the one in Asana because I just got to keep it in both places, you know. (laughs) And just in, in my case. phone as well, if just I'm on the go, yeah. <laughs> so I can feel stressed on the go as yeah, well. Like if you don't feel stressed on the go, you got to look. <laughs> and I think that it's finding what works for you. Knowing my human design has really helped. I think things like that, just really learning about yourself and learning about how your energy is optimized, I think is really powerful because it is so different for every single person. And then I like to look also, I think the way that we have powerhouse women as a business set up, it forces us to also get really strategic in like quarter by quarter, because we have something like the 800 person event needs a lot of attention in certain seasons of the year. So it's forced us to get really focused and that works well with my energy because then I can have all my creative thoughts going to creating content for the powerhouse women event, doing podcasts around things that would maybe make people want to buy a ticket. And that just happened to work because I have a business that is a little bit seasonal, but you could always create that for yourself too. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to put myself, trying to tell you something of what I'm doing right now, like what's helping me a little bit because I feel really chaotic right now. Um, but what I'm trying to focus on is what is the most important thing. And at the mm-hmm. end of the day, in, in my business, in both of them, the personal brand and in Glossy, the most important thing that I can do that I have the skill set of doing is getting more eyeballs to the brand. So growing social media making sure that our emails are better, getting in rooms like this and on stages and speaking. So, you know, even though I want to be doing some of these other things, I'm learning that that is the most important. So it's showing me what I need to be delegating. So looking at what's, what's the most pressing, is it the book? Because you need to really build, you know, brand credibility. So maybe you should spend some time there and tour it again. Or is it the podcast because you want to build more eyeballs or brand credibility? Is that the fastest thing that could grow? Or if you just focused on social, would that get you to grow a lot faster and direct that to your, it's kind of like figuring out what would be the fastest, most powerful way for you to get more eyeballs on what you're doing? Because essentially, and, and this could be wrong for you, but most things in our businesses can be solved by more eyeballs on your stuff. Because most likely it's not your product and it's not your messaging. It's lack of customers. And the only people who can create customers the way that you do in the beginning without having to pay for paid ads is you. And so if you're doing, if you are trudged down and this is a constant conversation we're having in my company is how do we get Lori out of the weeds? How do we get Lori out of the weeds? Cause they're like, she's the only one who can do this right now, me and Natalie right now. And so it's like, how do we make sure that we're out there trying to solve the main problem while also, of course, doing the other things that are important, but you'll start seeing, you might already be seeing it. There's just like, we're doing so much more content. We're getting more clear on the podcast. We're making sure that that's all present. Like there's a lot more ways to get eyeballs and then capture them. Well, actually I'm like your perfect target audience. Cause literally every time I go into Facebook and Instagram, it's like the second glow sees the second thing. I'm like, dang, Lori, you're doing good every single time. Oh, she's got a pixel on her face right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So yeah. hopefully that helps. And none of us have it figured out. No. Oh my god. Like other than maybe the very left brain, very logical systems oriented most of us in this room, if you resonate with both of us, you probably have a very creative part of your brain and your personality. And and it's okay to leave space for that part to really flourish. I get the best business ideas when I have the least on my calendar, you know, and that's, that takes trust, it takes a lot of trust. 
Hello. Um, my name is Sarah Chambers, and I'm the CEO and creative director of Ellie and Nora Creative, which is a full-service creative agency specializing in branding. And I am the host of the Chicks Who Give a Hoot podcast. Woo-woo! Woo, cute. <laughs> Just had 100 episodes. Um, nice. Thank you. It's awesome. Um, it was incredible. My question is that I am in a season of, yes, where it feels incredible, feels like doors are opening. It feels like people are paying attention finally, but I've been at this a really long time. Um, my <laughs> business is almost six years old. Finally. Oh, it feels like a really long, long time. time. It yeah. feels great. Yeah. Um, but I'm finding that there's a lot of fear in swinging for like the really big next thing because there's been a lot of years and no. So I would love just your thoughts on like what that feels like and what to do. Can you tell me? I'm just so curious what your what the really next big thing is for you. Oh, you're gonna make me say it out yeah. loud. Yeah, okay. I just really want to know. Um, well, I'm planning an event um, on March 8th, which is International Women's Day. Nice. And I've never done an event like that before. So, hopefully, over a hundred women in that room. That mm-hmm. feels really big and scary. And then, um, chicks who give a hoot definitely has to be a book. So. I love yeah, great. this. I love this. Yeah. And it's it's as someone who knows you, I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Obvious, obviously. Of course, totally. of course you would do that. <laughs> of course you would. Yeah. I can I can actually just feel the the transformation that you're really stepping into and declaring for yourself. It's like I can feel your power and I can feel that you're allowing yourself to be stretched by this. And I just really want to honor that first and foremost. And for whatever reason, this popped into my mind, maybe because you said, you know, this this event with a hundred people. I remember sitting and planning in my Friday shirt, the first powerhouse <laughs> women event. And I, and yep. I, I thought the first powerhouse women event would look more like this. I actually was scouting for someone who'd let me host it in their living room. I, I really just wasn't thinking that big. And then eventually as I started to, you know, expand the vision, I, I remember thinking maybe 50, like maybe 50 people. And there was one day where I was just like really feeling crushed by the, the weight of it, the bigness, because I couldn't I couldn't actually see the path for how to make that happen. That's how we know we're operating within mm. the zone that's going to actually have us grow is when you can't see your way. If you could see your way easily to 100 tickets, you wouldn't have to grow in order mm-hmm. to step into that. So true. And I remember just this I, again, I just it was like in a moment where I got quiet. I don't know if I was meditating or walking or what it was, but it was this kind of this little download of you don't need to know 50 people but I bet you know 10 who could all invite five friends. And so I think just knowing you are someone who shows up, you pour into people, you pour into communities, lean on that. And and especially if that feels uncomfortable to ask for support in that way, it's just notice kind of where you feel the sub stretch (laughs) within the big goal. And it might be that idea to individually reach out and message people. And you're like, I don't want to do that. But then it just means like that, that's asking you to lean into it because you're going to grow. You're going to find, you know, something, someone's going to say yes. That gives you just this jolt of confidence where you're like, whoa, okay, I can keep going to the next thing. So I think it really is that I love to set goals that just make me like want to puke a little. (laughs) And then usually one of the other uncomfortable things I get to step into in that is allowing people to really show up for me and asking for their support without being attached to what they say. And I just find I like the personal breakthroughs in that you're just going to transform so much as a, as a person in stepping into these goals and you'll hit a point where you're not sure if you can do it. And that's how, you know, you're getting like real dangerously close to that breakthrough. And I'm so excited for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. That's, it feels like throwing up all the time. (laughs) Yeah. You're doing it. Well, and I think because it is so different than the business that I have and the business that I've built where I really only need one to two people per month to say yes for this yeah. business and I need a lot more people to say yes at like at scale and that feels very different. Ooh, I have so many. I mean, we, we don't have to get into it, but I'll <laughs> give you like my entire playbook for like really how to create a momentum initially, like for your ticket sales. There are a couple like strategic things that I'm taking I'll, notes. Yeah. All day. Let's just set up a Zoom <laughs> call and I'll I'll download you like just some things that have really worked for us if that would support you. It really would. Okay, good. You. Yeah, I'd Thank love to so do much. that. Cool. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we can take one more. Last question. So good. Great question. And I can't wait for your event. Okay. So I'm Julie Berman and I have a podcast called Women with Cool Jobs that I have been doing. (laughs) Um, I've been doing it for now over four years. And um, like the previous person, I am doing like, I feel like I'm really working hard at being more visible, which is 
immensely out of my comfort zone, but I'm having an event in two months. And I also feel like I sort of know what I'm doing, but I also have <laughs> no idea like what I am doing. And my, my question is like, how do you, how do you mentally prepare yourself for these types of experiences when like, you know, and you guys talked to this today, it's like, you know, you're on a precipice. I'm like shaking, but you know, you're sort of on this precipice of like doing something that's immensely hard and big, but like so intentional and like, so in you that like, you can't not do it. Yeah. How do you approach those things? Cause it's like, it's going to happen and I mm -hmm. know it's going to happen. And I'm like, at that point where I'm going to start marketing and doing all the things, but it's also me stepping into this whole other, you know, zone that I've never been in. So I would just love your tips and insights for this kind of like moment. Uh, Do yeah. you feel that? Yes. <laughs> I literally can feel that energy where you're just like going to cry because it's so hard and so painful, but you know, you have to do it like in your brain, you've already done it and it's already who you are. But it's just that bridge from where you are right now to there feels like the longest, most torturous, most challenging walk ever. Like I can actually access that version of me before I did my first event. Like I, I feel her right now. So I feel you. I love that you're feeling this. It's, it's so awesome. Like it really is. It's horrible and it's awesome. And you are going to like you like just fast forward right now you are going to have done your event like you will come to an evening what time does your event get done like what's the uh, like at 12 30 in, in the, the afternoon, afternoon? Yeah. okay <laughs> it will be like two o'clock and you will be sitting around and looking at some of the uploads and some of the pictures and you'll be like i literally can't believe that god totally took over i hardly looked at all the things that i was gonna say and he like he totally spoke through me it's gonna be the most, those who take the biggest risks will be abundantly blessed. Like when they are for like this, like accessing who you are meant to be. I promise you. Now that does not mean that you cannot practice your talk or have an outline or work really hard to make sure that your people in the room connect. But I know that you already do that. I don't ever suggest winging it in the beginning. You earn that, you earn the right to wing it. But I will tell you that just this energy, you will not let things drop like your how you're feeling right now and your fear of it not going well or the way that you want is what is keeping it. That's going to be amazing. But you mm. also don't have to do this like you do to an extent. We can tell her all day long. She doesn't have to feel this. She's going to feel this like you're going to have moments of um, like complete. I can't believe I'm doing this. Is anyone going to show up? Even if one person shows up, that's exactly how this event was meant to be because in the future, you're going to help potentially women with events or whatever yeah. that looks like. <laughs> and you can't, again, you guys, we don't get to stand on a stage and go, my first event was 800 women. So like the, it's like in order for women to want to be in your stuff and follow you and listen to you, we really do need the story of, so no one showed up. Um, you know, I, you had a boot camp, or we don't want this for you and this is not going to happen. But no matter what happens, it's going to be perfect and it's going to be amazing. And I know you just came off of events. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think I like I ground myself into like the the part of your question, which was like, how do you mentally keep yourself mm. going? And it's it's this like you are so connected right now to the emotion of why and the impact you want to make. It did not matter how successful or what an epic failure that first event was. I just knew there was, it was it was being driven by something that was bigger than me and i just trusted that and then i had support around me and people who could pour back into me on the moments where i was like am i really doing this but it's just it's just inevitable that it's going to make an impact because your heart is already coming from the place of pure service and now it's just allowing yourself just like i was saying to sarah like allowing yourself to be transformed in the process because that version of you is the version that's going to step on the stage or the front of the room and they're going to be impacted it's it's that's what we're really doing when we're hosting events we say yes we set the date we start selling the tickets we're signing up to be transformed from that moment that we say yes to the vision until we step on the stage or stand in the front of the room and we stand there as the version that was transformed by the process of just having the vision and being willing to move forward toward it. And that's the version of you that's going to pour into these women. 
you're connected to that energy right now and you're in the process of becoming her. So just understand like in the moments that you are you feel like you're just breaking down, be like, no, I'm becoming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I'm just that. in the process <laughs> of becoming. Yeah. And it's going to be so beautiful and we can't wait to celebrate you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm excited for you. And just wear those earrings. You'll be fine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, I mean, a good statement <laughs> earring. You just can't go wrong. People wonder why I'm obsessed with the outfit. It's like, that's where my confidence comes from. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's my superpower. I love that. Thank you for these amazing questions. We're so grateful for you. We love these. I think we're going to pick these back up. I mean, you need to just come to town more. (laughs) She looks at me like I'm in control. You're in control. Make it happen. Um, And this is just our favorite thing to do. So thank you guys so much for coming. It was so good to be back with you. Yes. Thank you guys so much. 